So, well, I'm just gonna, people who will be watching this, if they don't come tonight, we may have a few drop-ins. Uh, yeah, okay. if we don't, uh, I will be putting this up on our website. So I just introduced myself. I'm Glynis McManaman. I'm a Good Shepherd sister and the director of Good Shepherd Arts Center. And uh, we have a mission to exhibit art and offer experiences that affirm human dignity, lift hearts, and that link creativity with spirituality in Ferguson in North County. And I am very pleased to have Brock Seals here tonight, who uh, has the current show. Hello, Brock. Hey. It's our second time saying hello. We had some technical difficulties earlier. So, Tennis shoes. <laughs> well, first of all, before we even go to that, or I shouldn't say tennis shoes. You can tell how old I am. I mean, they still call it. I, I know what they you still mean. Still call them that, but I know they're athletic shoes. But you know, I, I was wondering. You know, you're you're fairly. I mean, to me, because I'm going to be 66 this year, uh, you're fairly young to me. At 27, correct? 28. I just had a birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Um, and I just wondered, what is your first memory of making art? Uh, it had to be really young. I say around six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. I used to um, just get paper and just scribble like on the floor. Uh -huh. And I would just kind of scribble until I seen something. And then okay. you know, sometimes I got lucky and I seen something. I'm like, okay, let me trace that and, and do it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, most of the time it was just scribbling on paper. But uh, uh -huh. I just... I just know I feel good while I was doing it. There you go. You got an initial sense of call and a sense of vocation. Yeah, yeah definitely. Being an artist, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did have you had any art teachers who influenced you? Definitely. I think you may know him, Mr. Barnum. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know him. I tried to get him. I tried to catch him to let remind him that you'd be on. I don't know if he's available. Yeah, Jeff Arnold. Yeah, he was the the biggest inspiration for art to me early on he introduced me to art and just like a whole nother world of creativity so uh that was like my favorite class growing up was art I wasn't as talented but like I say I still had fun doing it you know <laughs> you weren't as talented I don't know it's talent's a hard thing to measure don't you think yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a big critic on myself so yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah I had I had lots of yeah. What, uh, do you remember any particular lesson that you had with him that made an impression on you? Uh, I remember one time we were working with like wires, like different color wires, yeah. and we would like shape them into certain things. We did a lot of uh, sculpting. I remember we would get the hard clay, shape something, and then he'll put it in the kiln. And okay. then the next next class we have like something new. I think we even painted on it or something. But mm -hmm. I do I do remember he always had these. Um, like we come into the room and he had like a big stack of like different colored papers mm -hmm. and what and he'll tell you, you know pick a color of paper when you mm -hmm. walk in we didn't know what the project would be but you would just pick some paper mm -hmm. and that was like an introduction to me for like color like I love seeing the bright big sheets of paper and I was just like mm -hmm. it, you know it's just exciting just to, to see that that rainbow of colors and just have mm -hmm. my my way to like kind of choose something hard to pick one yeah it was hard but <laughs> I think I would pick the same thing, who knows? <laughs> yeah, little color really shows up in your work. You also have a mentor, De, De Janeiro Jones. Yeah. How did you meet up with De Janeiro? Uh, he spoke at my uh, at my college that I was going to, Flow Valley, mm -hmm. St. Louis okay. Community College. So he had a, a, a talk there. He was, you know, just talking about himself, his practice. And, um, you know, afterwards I spoke with him and you know, we just got really cool after that and just kind of kept in touch. Mm -hmm. And the relationship just developed to, you know, I talk to him all the time. <laughs> yeah, he speaks highly of you. Yeah, and I mean, I'm thankful for him too. Like he's been yes. an excellent, you know, just like you say, mentor, a guide, you know, whenever I'm having questions about art or moving forward or ideas, you know, he's always there to, you know, coach me through it and just, you know, give me knowledge on different things. Like he's always sending me like articles Mm -hmm. who's in stuff in the art world like every day so oh that's great so you're getting a continued <laughs> education yeah yeah you keep me on my toes yeah <laughs> so how did you get into painting athletic shoes um I, well 
once I learned how to paint, which was at Florissant Valley, mm-hmm. I was already into sneakers. Like I was a big, <laughs> always buying shoes in high school. I just love, you know, fashion. So it was just like, just routine for me to paint on shoes. Like as soon as I learned how to paint decent on canvas, I'm like, okay, let's take it to the shoes. And um, because I remember like growing up, I always wanted to like make my own shoe, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was only like one time where I seen someone in my school that had custom shoes. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I want some of those. You know, I would love <laughs> to like, you know, just that feeling that I have something that nobody else has. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, once I learned how to paint, I grabbed my Timberland boots and, and had at it. Yeah, I'm gonna do a share screen. And uh, again, this is gonna be, well, kind of silly to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just wanted to say a few of them. I, I really see a sense of design and some of these is just playful design. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I like them. And then this one, what is this? Native. Is there uh, a story to this? Yeah. So it was for um, it was for a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. She wanted something to represent her native heritage. Mm-hmm. So she sent me, you know, like different pictures, you know, that uh, represented her culture. Uh-huh. And so this was kind of my take on, you know, her native native heritage. So it turned out really nice, like. That was one of my favorites that I did. I think that was last year, 2020. Mm-hmm. It's 2020. Yeah, so yeah, that's what it was. Do you remember specifically what her particular culture was? Uh, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I would have to look at my messages, but. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, and you're, you're using your phone for this, I'll bet. So. Yeah, I, I wasn't prepared for that one, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beef and Brock. That's such a funny title. Yeah. It's kind of like a uh, beef and broccoli, like the dish. Oh, 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 I'm so good. Now I get it. Oh, dear. Yeah, but you know, I threw my name in our Brock, so. Oh, too funny. Just being real clever. <laughs> you clarified. I bet everybody else who's seen this went, oh, yeah, beef and broccoli. <laughs> the green, purple. Yeah. Yeah. Design. How, how did you get to know uh, to meet some of these sports figures that you've done shoes for? Um, my brother Nicholas Coulter, he's my PR person, so he does a lot of reaching out to different sports players and organizations. And thanks to Instagram, we we come into contact and meet yeah. them, and, and yeah. you know, we make that collaboration. Yeah, you're very good at, at having posts on Instagram. Oh yeah, I gotta stay consistent. That's where you know all of my market, well, majority of my market, and a lot of people follow me on there. So I love how, you know, it just captures time for me. You know, so it's a big photo album. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go to oh, Marie welcome Marie Chu Elliot. Um, I'm gonna go to a um, a different I, three other paintings that we showed by you. I, one of them I hope is by you. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Mm-hmm. But um, I Uh-oh. had to out because, uh, oh, sorry, that's not, oh, cute, too funny, oh, I don't like when this happens. Um, I, let's see if I can change to what I want. Okay, there we go. This one, it's called, is it discreet? Mm-hmm. And story behind it? Um, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually a picture of Rihanna, the singer. Oh. Uh huh. So I, I like I love that picture that she took. You know the the mask, the pose. Mm-hmm. It was just um, even though she was like pretty much covered up and the eyes were just showing, it was saying a lot more. You know, so that discreet feeling just drove me to you know, paint her in the forefront of the abstract piece that I had in the back. This is one that it, it kind of it it makes my blood run cold for two different reasons. 
Now, one of them is as a white woman with law enforcement family members, it's like it's heartbreaking for me because I know good police officers and I want to go through that whole defense thing of da 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 da. But your reality and your experience is is different. Yeah. 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 That one. I got that hanging in front of my front of my bed. It's like right in front of my uh, in my room. <laughs> Is this yours? Yeah, that's me. Okay, what's the title on that one? Uh, hieroglyphs. That's right. This is when I see you going into this, the freeform patterns, kind of like the scribbling that starts mm -hmm. to turn into something and all of a sudden mm -hmm. the colors start to turn into something. Yes, yes. That was one of my first, I call it like masterpieces. Like one uh -huh. of the first things I was really proud of. This yep. was around the time I was still in college. And I was developing, uh, we're really just using this fragmented shape style. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of um, just a more thought out, uh, you know, version of that, that particular style. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like hands are kind of coming and touching each other and forming. Mm -hmm. That's always the, the thing with abstracts. People will say, well, I could do that. But you think, no, there's a little more to it. <laughs> yeah, it's a method. There's a rhythm that comes into it. It is, definitely. What other unusual surfaces have you used for your canvases? Um, mm -hmm. Just recently, not so long ago, maybe like last year, I painted a house, like the side of a house. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've done a car. Wow. I like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those are kind of the most unusual. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily unusual, but just just pretty major to me. Mm -hmm. And you're also a musician. Yes. So I have yet to listen. I'm I'm not really good at hearing rap or the lyrics. To hear uh -huh. because so I haven't ventured, but I want to. Yeah, you should um, definitely check it out. Definitely. I, I got will. videos and you know. Yes. yes, you've got quite the website. Mm -hmm. I try to, you know, split the art, music and art, so you can get a you know feel for everything that I do. So are there particular things that inspire you, particular ideas, or is it ever flowing with? What kind of gets you going to paint something? Um, I feel like myself, I'm a keeper of the time. Mm -hmm. And I like my art to, to reflect, you know, the times that I'm living in and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always something going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a, I work pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So I guess that works well with, you know, saying keeping up with current events and stuff like that. So it's always something going on, which means that, I'm always inspired to create. Mm -hmm. Have uh, you done anything with the, the whole pandemic? I actually have. Mm -hmm. If I wish, uh, I got a piece up here right now. It's kind of far. Okay, but you could. Can you pick up your phone and we could see it? Yeah. yeah let me see. I'm gonna have to like stand on the chair. Oh. <laughs> hey, let me step over here. Okay. Like I, get this. I don't know. I'm getting a tour. <laughs> Let me uh flip the screen, or is there a way to flip the screen? Oh yeah. Yeah, you got to reverse it. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. A bottle. <laughs> wow. Corona. Corona. Oh, that's not the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, so it's the Corona with a mask. Yeah. You know, that yeah. was, uh, I did that, I believe it was like, mm, I don't remember what month. Definitely around COVID time, so. Right. Well, you're still in COVID time, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was, this was the beginning of it all. You know, we were kind of just, you know, uh, 
bombarded with all of the news and it kind of got exhausting. So that's why I got him with the, the low eyes, you know, like he's haven't gotten any sleep mm -hmm. with the mask and, yeah. you know, just trying to make a little light mm -hmm. out of, a, you know, such a terrible, mm -hmm. terrible mm -hmm. thing we got going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you found that you've been able to keep up your productivity, even though it, during the pandemic, is it greater or lesser or the same? It's actually more. Like I, I started to do more, um, mm -hmm. less events, but more uh, murals and opportunities along the lines of that opened up for me. So, mm -hmm. and you so worked on a mural to, with uh, De Janeiro. Yeah, yeah, we did a really big mural at Wash U mm -hmm. um, over the summer for their mm -hmm. uh, 44 underpass. Yeah. So myself and like uh, like five other artists, we tackled that. So that was fun. That was really fun. Done any masks? <laughs> have, huh. you, have you done any masks? Oh yeah, yeah, I've done some masks. I have a mask now for my uh, <laughs> latest album, The Art of It. Yeah, Art of It. So, yes. <laughs> hey. That's great. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I got a bunch of these. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Um, we've been, since Marie has joined us, I wonder, do you have any questions you'd like to ask Marie? You're welcome to. Unmute. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just admiring. I'm just admiring your work, Brock. I'm a, I'm a writer and poet. So I have, as I tell them, no artistic ability, all my art is words. So I do that appreciate, art. Art. yes, I do appreciate the rhythm of rap <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't always appreciate the lyrics that i hear yeah. but i definitely appreciate the rhythm and the beats I but I'm, I'm blown I away by your work and I, I just think it's amazing and and i just want to honor you in your in your commitment to your art wow thank you so much i appreciate that it was nice meeting you nice to meet you so i would like i I will be curious to see what you begin to work on as we come out of the pandemic. Yeah, I'm really interested in myself as well. I never really <laughs> know what direction I'm going to go in. So but that's the fun thing, you know. But I, I just I just don't stop, you know. I'm, I'm sitting here right now painting shoes like. Oh, no. <laughs> My, my grandson, my grandson is really going to be impressed by these shoe paintings. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, sneakers are huge right now, so I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> well, I those are my questions, Fair Catherine. Did I? I have a ghost next to me. She doesn't show. She keeps I see him going up. in and out. Yeah, I, yeah, I see her coming in and out a little bit. Right. I, I just am captivated by what you do with shoes. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'd be glad to look up a few more of your shoes. I like the one that you had on constant contact advertisement with Black Lives Matter on it. Yeah. I understand Thank there are other athletes that you've done their sh shoes for, right? Ms. Harrison mm -hmm. Davis is not the only one, correct? No, no, he's not the only. He's the only major league baseball player that I've worked with. But I've worked with um NFL players, um no NBA players just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of football cleats. Yeah. That'd be fun. interesting. <laughs> yeah. They, really, they don't play in those though, right? They do. They do? Yes. Oh but they get all you, mucked up. How do you do you seal them with something? Do they last? Do they just wear out? Like a you, you, you got to prepare it. You got to prepare the surface. So it's a lot of sanding, removing, factory finishes. But uh, yeah, they, they hold up in the game. Like the ones that Harrison Bader wore, he wore those in the game. So what teams should we be watching to see what they have on their feet? Um, it, It's really like a season by season basis. So I work okay. with new players every season so you know I'll, I'll be sure to let you know okay good good yeah yes tell us what yes what, uh, what teams they are because i like football <laughs> well this past year i worked with the tennessee titans i worked okay. with uh yeah michael pruitt 
he's from St. Louis, but he's their uh, tight end. So I did his yeah. cleats for Christmas and a week following Christmas, I did two pair of cleats for him. That's wonderful. That is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it's that was definitely fun. Right. It's such a creative idea. It's just, you know, it and to have your to have your own individual pair of shoes. If that was, yeah, I would I wouldn't do it now. But as a child or a kid, I would have mm -hmm. loved that. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It's 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 dope to you know see my vision. That's starts in front of me and then yeah. it's out like on the tv screen or in a professional yeah. you know setting like that because oh. a player, football player or something like that so <laughs> to see you know they just come full circle is is rewarding to me a lot so was there one that you had done for a whole team or did i misread that um no i didn't do for the okay. whole team Okay, I had misread it. That's all. Yeah, maybe a, a lot of players on a team at once. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I do have the um, the African American Heritage Night coming up with the St. Louis Cardinals. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yeah, it was supposed to be last year, but you know, obvious reasons. Yes. Uh, yeah. you no know, season. The season was canceled, but this year, you know, if all goes as planned, I designed a hat, and you know, if you buy a specialized theme ticket, you'll be able to receive the hat. Which was designed by me. Okay, oh, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So I'm really excited about that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great to have had this time to talk with you. Oh, yeah. thank you for you know showcasing my work and yeah, you know, it really, really means a lot. Well, it won't be the last time. I'm hoping. Uh, just pray we're going to be talking to some folks about the possibility of a partnership. I don't want to say who or where, but in, in Ferguson, of course, um, okay. so that we can reopen. Uh, we're not going to reopen as our own space. We're going to try to find a partner. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would work out better that way, I think. Uh, so we'll see. And then, you know, I, I'm starting to think now who, you know, who will we have come in? And, and I've got you on my list. Hey, I'm, I'm there. Just okay. let me know. Okay. Send me the location. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks again. You have a good night. Good Thank to see you. you, you. Same you. here. Good to see you all again. All right. Take care. Nice all to right. see Take you care. again, Rob. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.